This is a short video lecture series pertaining to the content in Chapter 7. Weather is different from climate. Weather pertains to short-range daily changes in temperature, precipitation, humidity, wind speed, and cloud cover. As the picture depicts on the screen, it's a weatherman forecasting what the temperature is going to be across the United States. Climate, however, is a long-term pattern of atmospheric conditions over hundreds of thousands of years. Climate varies in different parts of the Earth, primarily because of global air circulation and ocean currents that distribute heat and precipitation unevenly between the tropics and other parts of the world. Factors that influence climate include the incoming solar energy from the sun, the Earth's rotation, the global patterns of air and water circulation as depicted on this map, the gases in the atmosphere, and the Earth's surface features such as topography, various changes in elevation. As you can see on this diagram, it depicts the different warm ocean currents and cold ocean currents around the world. And these ocean currents have a direct influence on climate. There are three major factors that determine how air circulates in the lower atmosphere, because air circulation also impacts climate. And those three factors include, one, uneven heating of the Earth's surface by the sun, we know that the sun's rays are more direct around the equator as opposed to the northern or southern hemisphere, hence the earth is unevenly heated. Two, the rotation of the earth on its axis, and three, the properties of the air, the water, and the land on earth. Prevailing winds blowing across and over the oceans produce mass movements of surface water called ocean currents, which are depicted on this screen. Major ocean currents help to redistribute the heat from the sun, and they also influence the climate and the resulting vegetation, especially near the coastlines. This diagram also depicts cool temperate areas, dry areas, tropical areas, based on the color coding that's uh, depicted on the screen. The El Nino effect, or the Southern Oscillation, or ENSO, is an example of interaction between land and air. It's a large-scale weather phenomenon that occurs every few years when the prevailing winds in the tropical Pacific Ocean weaken and change direction. Above average warming of the Pacific Ocean waters can affect populations of marine species by changing the distribution of plant nutrients. This figure depicts the normal prevailing or trade winds blowing east to west that causes shore upwellings of cold, nutrient-rich bottom water in the tropical Pacific Ocean near the coast of Peru. Every few years, this shift in trade winds occurs, and it's known as the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or the ENSO, E-N-S-O, and it could happen for about one to two years. This figure depicts the global air circulation, as air rises and falls in Hadley cells, it also flows away from or toward the equator and is deflected to the east or to the west, depending on where that cell is located. This creates global patterns of prevailing winds that help distribute heat and moisture in the atmosphere, and it leads to the Earth's variety of forests, grasslands, and deserts. As you can see on this diagram, it depicts that our tropical rainforests are typically located around the equator, our hot desert uh, is more towards the middle latitude area as you go north from the equator as well as south from the equator. And notice that areas north and south of the equator are equivalent types of biomes. And I'm going to define biome in the next slide. This slide depicts the Earth's climate zones. We also call these biomes, and we'll be discussing them in more detail in the next couple of slides. This map also shows the major ocean currents and upwelling areas where currents bring nutrients from the ocean bottom to the surface. And again, just to reiterate, the Earth's surface 
affects local climates. Heat is absorbed and released more slowly by water than by land. Therefore, it creates land and sea breezes. Mountains interrupt the flow of prevailing surface winds and the movement of storms. High mountains can actually create a rain shadow effect, which occurs along our western coast near California with the Sierra Nevada Mountains, as well as along the western coast of South America with the Andes Mountains. And then cities that have a lot of bricks and asphalt and traffic can create distinct microclimates, which vary in temperature and are typically warmer in temperature than surrounding rural areas. Again, this map is depicting cool temperate areas, tropical areas, and dry areas based on the color shading. And you'll notice that most of the dry areas are located along the same latitude around the Tropic of Cancer. And your tropical areas are also typically located along the same latitude near the equator. So there's a similarity in terms of where these climate zones are located in relation to latitude going north and south of the equator. So this map is depicting specific biomes, B-I-O-M-E-S, and a biome is a specific ecosystem, meaning a desert or a grassland or a forest, that is present because of differences in average annual precipitation and temperature, which is caused by air circulation patterns and ocean currents. So basically, biomes are determined based on the climate of a particular region. Also, climate will vary both in latitude as well as elevation, and I'll discuss this in more slides later on. A few key terms for you to know. First of all, ecological biodiversity or ecological diversity is the variety of habitat in a given area and I already mentioned the term biomes. Biomes are regions of the earth that can be sectioned into several major um, biomes as depicted on this figure. The biomes will relate to climate, in other words average precipitation and average temperature. The temperature and precipitation will determine the types of plants that can grow in a particular area, which subsequently will impact the types of herbivores or plant eaters that are present in that ecosystem, and then obviously the type of carnivores or predators and omnivores, which eat plants and other animals, um, that will occur in that area as well. It is all interdependent with climate being the foundation building block of the ecosystem. And I do want to make a clear point here that if the biomes occur based on climate and the species located within those areas are based on the biomes, the vegetation resulting from precipitation and rain and temperature, then it's even more important to understand this link to climate change. So subtle variations in temperature around the earth can cause an impact on the biome and the type of vegetation, as well as impact the animals that are living in that area. So climate is related to location in relation to the equator. The closer to the equator, the temperature increases with decreasing temperatures as you travel north or south away from the equator. Also, climate is related to elevation. The higher in elevation, the temperature decreases and becomes cooler, and as a result, different types of vegetation will be present. This figure depicts the Earth's major biomes in more detail. And we see that there are high mountain zones depicted in the dark blue. The Andes Mountains located here along South America. And you have a few high mountain zones over in this region, uh, Himalayan Mountains. You'll notice that we have a distinct desert feature across the northern area of Africa, which trends over into India and as well as China. We in Pennsylvania live in what's known as the temperate deciduous forest, and most of Europe has a temperate deciduous forest as well, and a good bit of China. Then we have this lighter green, which is a tropical rainforest, found typically near the equator, 
There are some areas of Africa that have tropical rainforests. Madagascar is known to be a hot spot in biodiversity as a result of its tropical rainforest. And along the coastline of Australia, there is some tropical rainforest in addition to this area here depicted. Notice that most of Australia is actually considered to be desert. Another biome is known as the chaparral, which is a type of grassland. And you also have a tropical grassland called the savanna. Most of Africa is a tropical grassland. There's a portion of South America in Brazil that is a tropical grassland. We have a little bit of a tropical grassland here in Africa, I mean Australia, sorry about that, Australia, as well as some chaparral in some smaller regions all around the southern portion of Europe. This slide just lists the different biomes of the world and provides the rainfall amount typical in those biomes. Notice that the temperate deciduous forest gets between 30 to 60 inches of rain per year and this is typically er the area um, east of the Mississippi. So we here in Pennsylvania are considered to live in a temperate deciduous forest. Pennsylvania gets on average about 42 inches of rain per year. And then notice how little rain the tundra receives less than 10 inches of rain per year, and only about 10% of the earth is considered to be tundra. This is just another figure depicting the major biomes as you cross the United States from the west coast, where San Francisco is being depicted, to the east coast where Baltimore is being depicted. Notice that we have coastal mountain ranges with the Sierra Nevada mountains. Uh, we have a coastal chaparral, grassland, kind of scrub shrub, deserty area with a coniferous forest along the ridgeline of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Then we have the Great American Desert, of which Nevada is located, because here's uh, Las Vegas being depicted. And then we have another mountain range, the Rocky Mountains, which is a mixture of coniferous forests in the high alpine regions. Uh, this is depicting Colorado area with Denver. Um, we have the Great Plains region, which follows in the Mississippi River watershed um, or the Mississippi River Valley, and this is primarily grasslands. And then here on the east coast, we have the deciduous forest. The rainfall amounts are depicted here for each of these major biomes. And what this figure is trying to depict is that rainfall is actually a major contributing factor to the variation in these biomes and the types of vegetation that are found in each. So there are three main types of deserts. We typically categorize a biome as being tropical, temperate, or cold. And examples of a tropical desert would be the Sahara or the Namib Desert. Temperate desert would be the Mojave Desert, and a cold desert would be the Gobi Desert. The desert ecosystems are considered very fragile because they have low rainfall and slow plant growth, and therefore their ecosystems uh, have a um, very short growing season and need to be protected as a result of their fragility. This slide depicts the temperature over time and rainfall over time in relation to these three different categories of deserts. It makes sense that there's more rainfall occurring in a tropical desert than in a cold desert. In addition, it makes sense that the temperatures in a cold desert are going to be lower than the temperatures in a tropical desert. And then this just shows you the type of landscape that is commonly seen in these deserts. The top photo is a tropical desert in the United Air Arid Emirates, uh, where there's a sport utility vehicle shown. The middle picture is a temperate desert in Arizona with a saguaro cactus, a predominant species in this ecosystem. And the bottom picture is the Gobi Desert in Mongolia, a cold desert where their Bactrian camels live.